All right, it is now the top of the hour, and I would like to get underway. Uh, a couple of things. First, I'm going to change the presenter over to Ty. Uh, so, Ty, you can get your screen getting ready there. I'd first like to introduce myself. I am uh, Graham Bingham. I am the education team lead with Jackrabbit Technologies. And on the line with me here is Ty McDowell, who is partner with Mobile Inventor. And we are looking forward to having a presentation on all the benefits of Mobile Inventor. A couple of housekeeping items first. I will have all of you on mute. Uh, we do have a full house here today, so just to keep everything calm and quiet uh, so everyone can focus on Ty, we'll have you on mute. You can uh, certainly type in any questions you have along the way into the chat box. Feel free to type in any of those questions and I'll be moderating those after Ty's presentation. We anticipate approximately 30 minutes of live presentation followed by a Q&A session. During the Q&A session, I'll also allow you, you're, you're also welcome rather to raise your hand. Uh, you'll have a little hand raise uh, icon on your control panel and I'll unmute you and you can ask your question directly if you would prefer to do so. <clears throat> This session is being recorded and you'll receive a recording of this along with the certificate of completion approximately one hour after the conclusion of the webinar. So you can keep watch for your inbox on that. Uh, that's about it all for me. So uh, Ty, do, you, do I have you here with me on the line? I'm here. Excellent. Without further ado, Ty, I would like to hand it over to you and thank you very much for taking over. Well, thank you, Graham, and uh, thank Jackrabbit for um, giving us the time to do this. I want to thank the, um, the people on this webinar uh, for the time you're taking. Um, I will try to make um, the presentation short uh, and brief uh, as I can uh, so that we have time to answer questions in the end and that uh, you can get to your business. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself real quick. Um, my name, again, uh, is Ty McDowell. I'm a partner with Mobile Inventor um, on the technical side. Uh, we started Mobile Inventor about four years ago uh, and have been partners with Jackrabbit almost nearly the entire time. Um, and we really do appreciate the partnership we have. Jackrabbit really does work really well. Um, a little bit about our company. We are a company based in Houston, Texas, and uh, our goal, our focus is to produce uh, mobile apps for small businesses that focus on children for the most part. Uh, so businesses like yours, dance, gymnastics, swim, cheer, those kinds of things. Not to say that we don't do other things, we do, but our focus right now is um, our businesses like yours and making the best out of the Jackrabbit Jack uh, partnership that we have. So what I'll go over first uh, it's just a short overview, um, just some highlights of why I think that you should consider uh, getting a mobile app. Just some things that I think are really important when making that consideration. Um, it's not a sales presentation at all. I'm not a sales guy. So um, we'll get to that, and then we'll walk through some of the actual meat of things. We'll walk through some of the features that you can get in the mobile app, some things that really do. Um, really facilitate a lot of the good things that we're going to talk about with your customers. And then we'll, I'll point you to a live demo that you can go and actually give the uh, one of our apps a test drive. So let's get started. Okay. So number one, remember these are about getting, why, you know, why you might get a mobile app. And number one is it increases revenue with a new direct marketing channel. So you all have your established channels that you use. Obviously, email is one of those, uh, different signage, those kinds of things. Uh, however, the mobile app happens to be uh, an extremely effective way of marketing, whether it be uh, events like camps or um, summer clinics or parents sign out or even enrollment. Uh, it, it is more effective than just about any medium out there besides face-to-face. -face. Um, for example, you want to send uh, an email out to your customers about summer camp. Uh, if it's not directly related to what the parent is doing right at that time, they may be interested. Uh, most of the time, it's going to happen to that email that gets stuck 
either in your spam, either in their spam, or way down their inbox, uh, and it gets lost. Uh, with push notifications, you are right on their mobile phone, their most personal device. Um, you send out a push notification, and you have the ability with that notification. Uh, it's not just text. You can send text or images or video. All of this stuff can be viewed straight from their lock screen. So you get the ability to push yourself right there on their home screen. Really, it's just the, probably the most uh, personal space they have on that phone. Along with that, interactive push notifications take your parents directly to content that you want them to see. So using that summer camp example, let's say that you send out your emails. Um, <clears throat> you have other ways of marketing summer camp as it comes up. But also, you use push notifications to help with that. Um, and at some point, when you're ready to open enrollment, you put a button on your push notification. Uh, for that summer camp push notification and say, enroll now. They click on that notification, or they click on that button, and you now have the ability to send them anywhere in your app or outside your app, somewhere on the internet if you wanted to. What we recommend is you send them straight to a class listing page for Jackrabbit that allows them to enroll right there, then and there. So at least kind of into the last bullet point here, which is push notifications plus mobile plus easy enrollment equals increased impulse buying. <clears throat> so for example, um, I'm a parent, I'm in a car rider line waiting to pick up my kids. They use my phone. Um, so I'm looking at my phone, you send out something about summer camp again. And again, summer camp is just an example. It could be really for anything that you do, any service that you sell. <clears throat> and it doesn't always have to be marked. There always be good will messages or closings or things like that. Going back to that example, I'm in car ride of line. You send out that notification about camp. At this point, uh, if camp is getting close, I've already seen a few notifications from you maybe. I may have seen one of your emails. I may have talked to staff about it. Um, so at this point, I may have already talked about it with my spouse. We may have made that decision that we probably want to do it, but really just haven't set aside time to actually do it. And this is where I think where you lose a lot of customers. <laughs> is where you have to be able to get that time for them to sit down and do it. It's not that they don't want to. You just need to be able to get hit them at the right time. Uh, with the push notifications, you give them that call to action to be able to do it right away. And knowing that it is a mobile-friendly product, knowing that they can do this in five minutes or less, uh, allows them to make that impulse buy. Uh, alongside with that, building brand and recognition. So the first part of that brand, creating an app that has features your customers will love while at the same time is well-branded and designed. So you have your brand that's, you know, displayed throughout your building, um, on your signage and other places. But having that extension of that brand on your, on your customer's phone, again, that personal device that they have, having that there all the time, just an extension of it. it. Just further reinforces your brand in that customer's mind. And that goes with rec brand recognition or stickiness. So the more often you can get customers involved with the app, the sooner they will be inclined to buy your product and or service. And as a rule of thumb, hearing and or seeing your brand approximately 20 times is what will get you truly noticed. A mobile app is a billboard for your business. So I do this all the time. I know that there's got to be at least a few of you that have done this. You're driving down the freeway. There's billboards everywhere. At least here in Texas, there are uh, everywhere along the freeway. Uh, you you tend to kind of um, wash them out. You don't really see them, except for you do see the one that says, "Does billboard advertising work?" And then underneath it, it says, "It does." You just read this. So. What's happening is you're going down the freeway, you're seeing those billboards, those advertisements, those brands are sticking with you, even if you realize, even if you don't realize they are. So when you have a mobile app and it's on your customer's phone, and your brand is right there, and they see it all the time, regardless of whether they use it every day or not, it's just another way for you to stick your brand in that customer's mind and, stick, and have it stick. Reducing cost to serve. So a lot of you have teen parents. 
or have teens, and along with those teens come parents that are very demanding in terms of the information that they require, when are we going, where are we going, what are we wearing, you know, all of those things. How did we do? Uh, the app is a great way not only for communicating that information, but giving them up-to-date information, and you can even pass protect. So you can have an app just for your team, or you can have an app for your entire organization and have part of it walled off, if you want, and have that pass protect. And going back to a question I've heard uh, here recently, along with Teams, you can also do um, staff communication in the same way. You could create pieces of the app that are just for staff, that are pass protected, that only staff have access to. Um, and then communicating in a more effective way than email. So we talked about email before. That was more on the marketing side. Was it really effective? I think we all know that every year that passes by, it gets less and less so. But this is more on the, on, on the side of communicating information, things that are happening events that are coming up. Um, having a place, one place where customers can easily go to your app, uh, where they know the information will be, they know it will be up to date, is the most effective way. So I, I've done this as a parent, I know a lot of parents have, where they're trying to pull up some information about, really doesn't matter, regarding their children. They've got two or three minutes to spare, they're looking through their email, um, you can't find it in time, or if you do, you find it at the last moment too late. Um, having that mobile app to be able to go straight to the information you know is there uh, is a great time saver for parents. All right, so customer loyalty and your competition. So on the cultivating customer loyalty side, it's all about making a sincere connection with your customers and making them a loyal lover of your product and their service. So again, it's about that extension of your brand, extension of you outside of the building, away from your staff, away from your coaches. That's where you do most of the meat and potatoes kind of interacting with your parents. But outside of that, it just gives you another way to enforce that loyalty that everybody wants. And I'll give you an example of this. <laughs> We have a customer that uses one of our apps, and uh, I'm, my kids are not parent. You know, we're not parents there. We don't have kids that use their service. They're out of state from out of us. However, one of the things that they do is they send out push notifications, especially on the weekends when they're having uh, meets. And um, it'll be, you know, this team scored this many points. We're doing this well on this event, and those kinds of things. Um, and it may be ten or so notifications throughout the weekend. Um, I don't know anything about this team. However, I like seeing the updates because it makes me feel good about them. It makes me root for them. For whatever reason, <clears throat> even if I'm not a customer, it's not necessarily something I can explain about the way humans are, but for some reason, those types of communications make us more loyal to a company we already enjoy, a customer, one that we're a customer of. And then staying ahead of your competition. So providing your parents with a mobile app is a sure way to separate from your competition. And if you don't think that your competition is thinking of the same thing that you are right now, then you'd be wrong. Uh, they'll either get there or you will. And then lastly on this presentation, improving customer experience and value. So what I've done is listed a few things, you know, that I think are good highlights. Um, we're going to go through a lot of this in more detail uh, in just a second. But these are some of the highlights that really do help improve the customer experience and value in the mobile app. Of course, the obvious one is the easy-to-use mobile-friendly integration with the Tech Road Parent Portal. Um, I tag along with that the relationship that goes along with that that we have with Jackrabbit. Um, I would mentioned before that our relationship with Jackrabbit has been you know, a few years in the running, and uh, it really is founded on trust and uh, a knowledge that both of us give superior customer service, and that um, whenever we're making a change, we let Jackrabbit know, and whenever they're letting, making a change, they let us know. It really is awesome. 
they will, before they put out a big change, that they let us make sure it works right the whole lot. And I think Jack or the customers can be very thankful for that. Uh, next, quick registration, enrollment, and classes and special events. That goes along with the integration with Jackrabbit. Current customer early registration. Now, not everybody does this, but we do have some customers that use their mobile app as a tool to provide their parents, their current customers, with an advantage. So you can do in Jackrabbit early registration for current customers only. And using the mobile app to offer that is a great way of, of improving the value to your customers. If you have loyalty cards, or what we, you know, some people call punch cards, you can, you, and you get the mobile app, you can throw those away with everything to our uh, dashboard and allow parents to use basically electronic versions of those cards. The good thing about those cards is they can be shared between parents in the same family. Um, so that there's no having to get multiple cards and things like that. Up-to-date information. So all of the content in your app is up to you. So if you make a change, you need to put some important message in the app, you can make that change in a matter of minutes and have it updated in the app immediately. Along with that, the Jackrabbit information that's in the app is not synced. It is not uh, something you have manually have to do. It's automatic. It's dynamic all the time. So if you update my child's skill and I go and look in the app at my child's skill, it will be there. If I make a payment, it's immediate. All of those things that parents do in the parent portal on the desktop side are available in the app and they operate the same way. Um, next is skills tracking. We just saw, just talked about that. And being able to quickly get to your child, your child's skill. Um, this time straight into the Jackrabbit skill. And then lastly, Stat Tracker. So Stat Tracker is a is a, an additional piece we built into the mobile app. This is for gymnasts, so it's not for everybody, but it allows um, gymnasts to record their event scores throughout different meets and then track that uh, over time. And we'll, I'll show you a few screenshots of that here in a minute. Okay, so lastly on this presentation, there's three more things, two more things, really. These three things we'll, we'll go over quickly if we have enough time. And the, the first thing I want to show you is our features overview. This will really give you a good, a good feeling of what is in the mobile app, what's available. And then when we're done with that, I will go over a live demo that we have on our website of, a, of an actual app. It's a copy of one of our production apps of one of our current customers. And so you're allowed to do whatever you want to in that app. You can sign up John and Susie for whatever class you feel free to. But it, it's meant to give you a good, a good feeling, a good um, satisfaction of what is actually in the mobile app. So I'm going to click over to features here. Okay, so you can find this at our website at mobileinventor.com. Um, there will be a link right here, right next to the logo called features. You can click that. So the very first thing we talked about this, um, this is the mobile, mobile integration with Jackrabbit Class. And it really is with all of the Jackrabbit products except for Easy Care. Uh, so the very first one is custom class listings and schedules. Um, you can see this here. This is a, the ability to do the same similar thing that you do on your website, where you just make it easier on your parents in order to get to um, you know, a ballet class or uh, level one gymnastics class, girls class. So instead of having to search, you can create uh, custom listings in the mobile app. In at the moment and registration, so clicking on register takes them straight to an enrollment screen that allows them to just check off who they're enrolling and be done with it. And I, something I want to point out here along with this integration, if you're a parent and you log in to the mobile app, you do not have to log in again. So what that does is it removes a barrier. It removes the barrier to using 
the you know the jack the parent portal part of it, but more importantly, it removes that barrier that when you are trying to do that quick sale to somebody um, of having to worry about what their login information. Is. So once they've logged in, um, so go, going back to that that camp push notification, I open up your notification, I click register, it goes straight to the to a register page like this one here. I click register there and I'm done. So at most it took me 10 to 15 seconds to get that done. And because it was easy, uh, the likelihood that I'll do it again next time I presented the opportunity is much higher. And lastly about this integration, parents can change billing, they can make payments, use student skills, and much more. So one thing I need to uh, point out before I go too much further, I should have pointed this out a little bit earlier. A lot of what I'm showing you um, is part of what we call our standard app. Our standard apps come with Jackrabbit integration, but also with content. So if you're looking at um, a page that has class descriptions on it, or you know social media things like Facebook photos and calendar and Instagram links and Twitter links and things like that, those are what we call standard apps. The information you're looking at here, this is all Jackrabbit integration. This comes with our basic app as well. So if you're looking for a much, um, a little bit lower um, entry into getting a mobile app, feel free to go with the basic option. Just, there's no development fee with it. It's $25 a month. Um, and honestly, $25 a month for unlimited push notifications is pretty fantastic. And that's about the only sales I'm going to do on that part. But um, and you can always upgrade to a standard app that has actual content in it if you want. So and when you are comparing pricing, it's pretty clearly laid out uh, what is what comes in the basic, what comes in the standard. But for expediency and just trying to show you all that's available, we're showing you mostly what's in the standard. All right, so push notifications. This comes along with all of our apps. Um, I'm trying to show you quite a few different examples here and how this works. So in push notifications, you can see that in this one, there's a video. And along with that video, you can put in text. So now, and this is pretty recent development, you can send out a notification with, you know, let's say some team video or dance video, or whatever it is, even a promotion, uh, and put some subtext below it, and people can play that video straight from their lock screen without even opening the app. Now, if they click on that notification, it opens up the app and takes them straight to what we call our message center. And that would be this right here. So you can see at the top left, it says message center. In this case, uh, we sent a coupon. Somebody clicked on that coupon to get more information. You can have more detail here if you want, but it's not necessary. Um, and then when they go back to the message center, they're able to see all of the things they've received. Interesting, interestingly enough, I um, had more time saying that word. Interestingly enough, um, even if a customer opens your app for the first time and they decide they don't want push notifications from you, even if they do that, there's no way for them to get around the messages going to the message center. Um, so those things are always there, even for people that have turned it off. The only thing they've done is stopped this from happening, from showing up on their screens when the app's not open. Um, also, our research shows that about 75 to 85% of the parents of the installs that you have for your app keep the push notifications turned on anyway. And that makes sense their parents, their customers. One of the main reasons they're downloading your app in the first place is to get that type of communication from you. Now, one of the things, the, one of the more effective things that you can do with push notifications, and you'll see this in the bottom example here, um, is linking to content inside of the app. Um, and I call this a call to action. So in this example, this is Pete Kids. This is a, a, a gym out of Utah. They've been a customer of ours for a while. And they sent out a, an image that talks about Camp Kid. And you can notice at the bottom it says first five callers. He 
you register for Camp Kid, you get five free lunches, which is $25 value. Now, Peak Kids does this a lot. They use their app as a incentive for parents, so parents that have it may get special deals that other people don't. Um, and what you'll see is they'll send out, another, they'll send out this type of notification, and then within five minutes, send out another one saying it's been claimed. So it is very effective. We do have parents that watch for that on a regular basis. But what's more effective is that when I click on this, it opens up the app and takes me straight to a page that talks more about Camp Kid. Um, this can be as much as you want. You can include more images, more video, more text, whatever you want. There is the opportunity to put a register button. And when I click that, it can take me to a class listing in the app or to straight to an event from the event calendar. It allows me to take that call to action and do something with it right now. This is another example from another one of our customers where they're just talking about uh, new enrollment for preschool, junior, and kindergarten. So to me, when you're considering getting a mobile app, <laughs> the Jackrabbit in integration, of course, is, apparent, is important. That provides value to your customers. But in terms of being able to communicate with your customers and that mark that extension of your marketing, this is one of the the best things that you can do. Deep linking, this is something that we've recently uh, deployed. Uh, I won't try to go into this in too much detail. If you want to learn more about it, I suggest you come here and just kind of read through it. But basically, what this kind of boils down to is we give you a link that, that you can get from your dashboard once you have the app. A link that you can put in your email marketing, on Facebook, anywhere on social media, on your website, that when people click on it, uh, it does its best to determine whether they have your mobile app installed or not. And if it does, it takes it straight to specific content in your app. So for example, we're talking about that camp. Um, in this case, we'll just use this example. Send out an email about uh, Rec Cheer, and here you have an Enroll Now button. Behind that button is one of our deep links. When I, if I have your app and I click on this button, it just opens up the app and takes me straight to the Cheer registration page. So it's a lot more effective than taking you to a website, but then you've got to go find what you want to do, and then you have to sign in, and then you can register. Um, it's just much more effective, much more convenient for your parents. Um, some examples of what happens uh, when the user doesn't have your app, they're pushed to a page that allows them to have the choice of downloading the app or going straight to your website where that right to your information might be. And then if they decide to open up the app or download the app, when they open it, it will take them straight there. And so any subsequent you know, clicks on a link like that will just go straight to the app like this. And then lastly, and it's not on here, um, lastly, if you click on that link from a desktop, so let's say I were to open this email right here from my desktop, then it would take me to a page that says, you know, this is, use our app, this is a description of what our app is, if you want our app, just put in your phone number and we'll text you a link to the, to the app. Um, so it's just another avenue, another way of getting your app in front of your customers. Uh, so if you're worrying about how am I going to promote this, um, we do give you quite a few different options, a lot of different tools you can use. This is one of, I think, the most effective ones, the most important ones you can use. Um, and it really makes it very easy on yourself. All right, so when you sign up with us, everybody, uh, regardless of whether you're basic or uh, you sign up for standard app, you all have access to our app statistics. They are real time. You can get daily and monthly detail on how the app's being used, how many enrollments you're getting, downloads, active users, all of that information is available. And you can look at it over the years as you, as you have the app and you can really tell how am I doing not only at promoting the app, uh, how, are, how am I doing on the onboarding, you know, am I really getting that many people to use it? And then on top of that, what are they doing? Are they using it to enroll? Are they using it just to look at their parent portal? All of those things are important information for you to, under, to be able to look at, to understand how your app is really doing. <laughs> In this example, 
Uh, for this particular time in March, there were 267 enrollments for this particular parent. Um, you can see we break it down uh, by number. And then you can always download that to a CSV file that shows you all of the enrollments, the class ID, the student, um, when they did that. Uh, so it's a very effective way of understanding what, what came through the mobile app. Um, and then this is another example of our statistics. You can see that um, this is a, a view of activity for this particular app over six months. You can look at it as a daily view, a weekly view, or over six months. Um, in this case, this app's been open 19,000 times in six months. And you can see that the most important thing was going straight to their account and then looking at students. These to start looking to see what else they're doing. They're searching for class. They're looking at notifications the stat track, those kinds of things. So it really does help you understand, overall, what are people doing in my app. <clears throat> so we talked about punch cards. Uh, this is, shows you what they look like. Uh, on the dashboard from our side, uh, this is how you would set up a punch card. You notice there's only five or you know, six or seven fields there to set it up. To put a user on a punch card, it's even less. When you set up a user, on a, a, a brand new user on a punch card, they automatically get an email from us. And here's an example of that. There'll be an activation code, a one-time thing. They do it inside of your mobile app so that they can activate that card in their app so that they can see it. They are welcome to forward this email to their husband or their wife or kids or whoever want to be able to use that, use that punch card. Um, it can be activated from any number of devices. When the punch card is punched, so when it's punched from uh, a staff member can punch it on the phone, on that person's device, or they can punch it on the dashboard. We have a number of people who do a lot of the punches after a specific class is over. Um, they'll just go through a big list of them and punch them all. Um, when that happens, anybody that has that card activated gets notified. They will tell them the name of the punch card and how many punches they have remaining. This is something we added pretty recently, and it really has helped with customer confusion, especially when there are multiple parents using the same card. Um, helps resolve some disputes about when this card was punched and who used it. And of course, we keep track of the history for punches too, if you ever need that to back your story up. Um, and then um, parents can look to see how many punches they have left. Uh, quickly, branding. We put the app together for you. So what we do in the process is no matter what, no matter whether you're using a basic app or a standard app, we'll ask for your logo first. And then we will create a <clears throat> we'll create app icons that go on the device. Those who go on the app store, when people are looking at your app to decide whether they want to install it. And then we send you proofs and only until you approve those do we move forward. Now, in the standard app, we take that a little bit further, and we apply that branding uh, to a certain extent throughout the app um, so that it's consistent. Pass protected content, we talked about that already. This is just a, uh, the ability to wall off parts of your app with a password. Unlimited content, uh, with the standard app, you have, we, we give you about 20 to 25 pages, and that's not set in stone. Um, sometimes it's more. Uh, it just depends on what we think is necessary to give you a really good start of an app. Um, but then you, we, you get training on how to manage that content, and you can change it at any time, and you can publish those changes when you're ready. And the dashboard is easy to use. Um, it's easier than what you use for your website right now, I promise. And in terms of customer support for how do I make this change? I'm having trouble doing this. How do I send notifications again? All of those things, regardless of whether you're on basic or on the, the standard app, we provide email and telephone support. And it doesn't matter who you are, we treat everybody the same. Um, we also have Google Calendar integration. Um, this is great for teen kids that are trying, you know, teen parents that are trying to figure out where a specific need is. Um, you can just click on the link, it opens up to the directions immediately, and you can also save events to your calendar on your device. So you can set reminders later. Um, social media integration. So with Facebook, we do pull in all your photos. 
get organized on his albums in the app, and, and then parents can browse through those. And we also open up the specific parts of your social media, such as your YouTube channel or your Instagram account. Those things, we open them straight up to where um, you want them to be inside of the native app um, <clears throat> that allows for the best uh, experience with those different uh, accounts. Stat Tracker, this is something we talked about for gymnasts. Um, this is just a view of one particular um, account where there are two meets set up. Um, these are the scores for each event in one of these meets. And then a graphical view of this person's floor scores over the last two uh, meets. And we talked about our dashboard. It's really just an example of what it looks like. Um, very user friendly. You can change content at any time. Make content changes for a future date. You can send and schedule notifications. And I think that may be something I forgot to mention. Was that with our notifications, you can send them immediately or you can schedule them for the future. And as well, you can put an expiration date on it. So, for example, if you send out some promotion, it's only valid for today. You can have it expire tomorrow morning. Um, so, what happens is it will be in their message center, but at a certain time tomorrow, it gets deleted from their message center. There's nothing you have to do to make that happen. There's no work. So this is an example of you know, managing some content in our dashboard. Um, and then down here below is an example of sending a uh, push notification with images and text and, and an actual uh, call to action button. And then lastly, um, our app is available on both uh, Apple or iTunes and Google Play, so it's Android and iOS devices. We provide full technical support for all of this, so we're constantly keeping up to date with changes in those operating systems. And um, we will make hundreds of changes to the apps throughout the year, probably thousands, most of which you won't recognize. Um, you won't notice that they're even there. Um, we do do major updates to the App Store, where we'll submit the apps to the App Store, and we manage all of that approval process. All you have to worry about is managing the expectations that your customers have, promoting your app, and just getting it to full use. Okay, so that's it on the features. I do want to, and I did not want to do that, I do want to show you one more thing that really, if you do anything, uh, I want you to try out this demo. So if you go to mobileinventor.com and go to Jackrabbit, slash Jackrabbit, what we've done is we've taken one of our current customers that we thought was a great app, a really good example of what the app can do, and we cloned it, so we created a copy of it. And the database that it goes to in Jackrabbit is completely a test database. So you're Feel free to do whatever you want to do in this app. Um, we figured out how to put it on our web browser so that you can actually uh, play with it. But there are some things that are not available in here, such as uh, push notifications. Okay, that's one of the biggest things in the app. So what I suggest you do is download a few of our apps. One in particular, and I should have written this down, it's called Club Gymnastics. It's two words, and it starts with a K. So these guys do notifications almost on a daily basis, sometimes more. I happen to think it's very effective, um, but they really do a good job of pushing their camps um, and other special events they have coming up. If you want to see graphical, interactive notifications, download that app. Wait a few days, you're bound to see a few. <laughs> okay, so if you want to start this app, uh, we do give you a login for the parent portal. You can create a brand new one if you want, uh, but this is one that's already there, so if you want, to keep up. Um, I ask you to be patient when this thing is loading. Um, this is not the app loading. This is now, uh, but sometimes, depending on your internet connection, it might take a minute to load. All right, so you can see this is Dance by Design. This is a, an app done for dance. We'll have gymnastics um, and possibly swim and some others available in the, in the near term. We're hoping that we get a gymnastics one out there by next week. Regardless, the integration is the same. Uh, 
the layout might be a little bit different because the different types of business. So feel free to drag up and down to click and do whatever you want to do, just as though this mouse right here were your thing. Um, if you want to get into your account, this is the Jackrabbit integration right here. Just log in real quick as this parent. So if I were a parent doing this in a real app, I would be the last time I had to log in. So every time I came to my account, it would start right here. Now in here, you can go to my account. I can look at payment options. I can edit that if I want and change my credit card here. So everything that's available to the parent in the desktop version of the parent portal, um, you know, outside of the app, is available here in the app. Right, so I can make payments through my payment history. Now, in this specific demo, we don't have the payment process set up. Um, we hope to have that down here in a couple of days. But normally, you would have a balance here with a pay button that would allow you to finish that payment. You can view your online registrations, your emails, your text, all of those things parents can do. Now, this um, You can also view your students and their skills. And along with that, if you plan on using the uh, Jackrabbit has a check-in, auto check-in feature um, that you can scan barcodes through. And um, what we do is we take that step a little bit further, and we automatically create QR codes that are available in the app. So if I were to go here as a parent, you can see I have a QR code for each student, and I just have to run that underneath the scanner while it's attached to Jackrabbit so it can perform the automatic check-in. Um, in the event calendar, searching for a class, all of those things. I'm not going to go through everything. I'll let you do this for yourself. Um, but I, you know, feel free to, to interact with this as much as you want. Um, and also check out the other things, such as you know the calendar, the social media integration, all of those other things that we talked about. Um, and real quick, this is an example of giving your customers quick things that they can get to. Um, these are for current customers, obviously. They know what they want, so just put it on the home page here and allow them to get their like summer technique classes. This will take them straight to a list of classes for that where they can enroll quickly. Um, as a side, when you send out that push notification, you can send it to any content you have in the app. So you could send it to summer technique classes and, and give them the opportunity to enroll right away. <clears throat> okay. Well, I think that's it, Graham. I think I've gone through the overview of why you, you know, why you should get an app. Gone over the features. We talked about the demo, which I really do encourage you to go to. Um, and I will hand it over to you, sir. Excellent. Thank you very much, Ty. <clears throat> A couple of things I want to just uh, under underscore. If any of you are currently using Plevo for text messaging, for example, you know that you need to per, uh, purchase those in $25 increments and so on. And all you get out of that is the ability to text a parent. Uh, depending on the carrier, they may or may not receive those. So uh, using Mobile Inventor for push notifications is a really great thing. You get great communication. You don't have to worry about deliverability. It's right in their phone, right in their hand. So it, it's a great service for that. Uh, I do have a couple of questions that have come in. So I'm going to start from the top here. This one actually was posed by Caitlin, who has had to leave. I've answered her off uh, offline, but for the benefit of someone else, uh, Ty, Caitlin asked, uh, she runs a music school. Do you think this app is usable for us even though we mainly just do private lessons? Uh, so for anyone else who may be in that situation, Ty, would you like to comment on that? Yeah, I think it is. Um, we, have, we do have a few music schools um, that use our app. And just giving them, first of all, you got to remember there's two primary things you're doing. Number one, you're giving them access to um, the the parent side of this, the portal side, the Jackrabbit integration. And number two, you're giving them the um, the ability to communicate with them you know, immediately. So just having those two things is enough um, to uh, you know to afford twenty five dollars a month, let's say, for the basic app. That's definitely worth it in my opinion. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, I would certainly agree. 
Uh, I have a question from Christine Smith. I'm going to actually unmute Christine and ask her to uh, pose a question to you. Uh, Christine, I've unmuted you. Would you mind asking Ty your question, please? Sure. Thank you. Hi, Ty. How are you? I'm good. Quite, my question is, is there a difference between, say, a regular person downloading the app because they're interested in our business or just because they want to follow us? Uh, as opposed to a current family downloading the app and then they have the login and then part two of that what happens if a family leaves the studio is there an ability to give them different access okay so when you download the app we don't differentiate whether you're our, you're a current customer or not um, you as a current customer, obviously you're, you'll want to log in to my account. If you're not, um, you won't have a login, but you'll be, you'll you'll uh, have the ability to search for classes and then enroll in those classes. And then once you do that enrollment, that first time student registration, um, what we do is we then remember the username and password that they used, and we automatically log them in so that the next time they open up the app, they're automatically logged in. Okay. So, if you're if you're expecting that you will have a lot of potential customers download the app, then more than likely the standard version of the app is the best option because it has other parts of your business, your social media, class descriptions, things that may encourage them to sign up with you in the future. The basic mm -hmm. app is more so um, directed at your current customers now. Um, new customers can download that app and enroll themselves in a class just as they could <laughs> from your website. But in terms of following you for all of that other types of information, um, the standard app is a better way to go for that. Um, okay. And then to ask you the last question, um, it's the same. We use the same account as in the parent portal. So if somebody has left and you no longer want them to be able to um, log in, to the parent portal or interact with that side of it, then um, you just block them on the deck card side. Um, delete their okay. account or keep their. I think there's a few options you have in Jack Rabbit. Those options apply in the app as well. So you just made me think. So if we have the ability, say, even if a competitor wanted to download the app, uh, they can download the app, but they would not have access. Well. I mean, I guess there would be nothing that they would be privy to unless we unless we gave it to them. So, because I don't mind people looking at social media because that's for everybody. Right. Okay. So one of the one of the things you're, you won't be able to keep people from downloading the app, and we don't wall off the entire app, um, so you have to have a password. But if you're concerned about certain parts of content that you really only want current customers to have access to. Um, mm -hmm. And then that point, what I would use is the uh, uh, is the past protected content. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Christine. You did have a couple of other questions. I'll just quickly uh, just fly through them. Uh, you had mentioned so you can communicate with your clients on what's going on, the, being the push notifications, uh, in, uh, and you're sending attachments. I'm presuming that's through email. Uh, your question was, can I use both or replace with one? Uh, I'm pretty sure the answer to that one is you can continue to use both, but certainly sending down the push notifications would be far more effective than sending attachments, mm -hmm. I would think. Definitely. Yes. Uh, and what about videos? Ty, can you have videos uh, sent down through Mobile Inventor? Okay, so there's a few ways to use videos um, within, the, within the mobile app. Um, number one was in the push notifications. So let me go back here real quick on my screen. And so let me go here. The very first example is an example of um, mm -hmm. a dancing, um, you know, presentation that somebody get recorded. And so you can send out that video via a push notification. So people can even watch the video from their lock screen. They don't even have to be in the app to do that. Another way to do that is to embed YouTube videos or Vimeo videos. There's a few other services that you can embed in the app. 
And then thirdly, you can point to specific channels, um, such as your own YouTube channel. And in that case, we'll open up your YouTube channel in the YouTube app as well. So there's a number of different options. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Christine. Any further questions, Christine, you're certainly welcome to contact uh, Mobile Inventor directly and they'll certainly be able to assist you in that regard. Uh, next question was, uh, uh, Romeo, I hope I pronounced that correctly, how do I reach the demo to the app? Ty, would you mind bringing up once again the URL? It is mobileinventor.com slash jackrabbit and for everyone on this webinar, uh, you will receive a recording and in the, uh, sorry, <laughs> a follow-up email with the recording, but you will also have a direct link to that uh, demo site as well, so you can get right in there. Uh, thank you, Ty, for bringing that up. <clears throat> so, I do want to point out one thing on this. Um, the demo is, uh, is fairly new, and um, in order to watch how many people use it so that it doesn't get too much attention, it's not real obvious where it is on our website, so I can encourage you to use this direct link um, that Graham will give you. Um, also, there are a few other ways to find it. Um, if you're looking under pricing, okay, which is available at the top of our website, and you look under Jackrabbit, you'll see there's a take a test drive button, um, and that'll take you there as well. Excellent. Thank you very much, Ty. <clears throat> uh, I have a question, Ty, from Lee. Lee asks, are you able to add or share content by class, specifically music uh, and choreography? <laughs> well, yes, yeah, specifically, right, well, we are currently in what is, uh, we are currently in development of an extension of the way we do push notification. And what that does, what that will do is allow you to create groups of people that get certain notifications. The people will be able to subscribe to groups. Um, that you've defined, um, and then you can restrict some of those groups with only people you want to be in that group. Um, and then you'll be able to send push notifications just to those people. Um, now, in terms of using the category one, two, or three, whatever that person has been enrolled in, either currently or in the past, to send them messages, that's not currently available. Uh, however, we're, we're figuring out ways to do that with Jackrabbit so you can do that targeted type of event. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, Lee, if that didn't fully answer your question, again, reach out to Mobile Inventor and uh, I'm sure we can work with you on that. Uh, next question is from Celeste. Uh, let's see. Curious if a parent can register a student on the app without actually choosing a class. Uh, they currently don't allow parents to choose the classes that the students attend. This would be the same for the portal. Of course, the uh, the mobile uh, app would also include the uh, the portal. So, some people Ty do set up uh, registration only and not allowed to choose a class. How does Mobile Inventor handle things like that? It's the same way. So, same way. Uh, if your registration, you don't require them to pick a class in order to enroll. Then. Um, when you go to the, if you have it so that now the flow in the app is a little bit different. Um, however, if you are, uh, if you go to new student registration, and in Jackrabbit you have it set so that um, classes are not required, then it will allow you to go ahead and finish that registration. If you do require classes, it'll ask you to find to find a class first. At which point you can go to the search for a class or any of the custom class listings throughout the app. And then once you um, hit register, it will take you back to that registration page to allow you to finish the registration. Very cool. So it really follows the settings you have in uh, in your Jackrabbit account is basically uh, how that flows, hey? Correct. Excellent, excellent. Uh, I have a question from Christy. The question is, for the quick access menu items, do you get to choose which category the classes are pulled from, or is it predetermined by category one, category two, etc.? I'm not sure if that's super clear, Ty, if you need further information on that. Um, I, it depends on what we're talking about. So if you're talking about, let me see if I can go, I don't want to take up too much time. Um, in the Jackrabbit integration part of it, there is a search for class, mm -hmm. and there are drop downs that you choose what you want to show there. Typically, it's your category one, two, and three. Um, your instructor, the dev, 
the week, I think. All of those things are controllable <laughs> on the Jackrabbit side and on our side. So if there's some things you want to remove, um, those are easy to do. Um, you can also in Jackrabbit change the heading to those. So instead of calling calling it category one, you can call it you know, gymnastics classes or uh, level or whatever, however you have it structured. So yes, those are all completely customizable by you, both on the Jackrabbit side and on our side. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, that is about all the questions we have, except for uh, one final question from Christine Smith. Uh, mentioned that you didn't speak about pricing besides the $25. Uh, however, I do know that you have a link there that takes you onto pricing uh, on your website, and so I think more information could be found directly on your site, yes? That's correct. So the basic app is $25 a month. Um, with no development fee. The standard app is $149 development fee and $59 per month. Great. So and you can compare the two of those on our website to understand what the differences are and get a viewing for what might be best fit for you. And as a side note, if you do get the basic and you decide, hey, I'd like to, to get the standard app, we can normally do that upgrade in about two to three days. So without, without having to affect your current customers. Excellent. Excellent. A great value. I, I'm sure everyone on this webinar can imagine how beneficial it would be to have a mobile app in the hands of your parents uh, getting access directly to your, your classes and whatnot. So I do encourage everyone to go and check out the demo. Again, that link will be in the follow-up email coming out shortly. Uh, again, this recording will be sent to you as well. And uh, Ty is always at the at the ready to answer any questions. I'm sure. Uh, Ty, any further further uh, closing comments before we wrap this up? Uh, no. All I want to say is thank you, uh, thank you, Graham, thank you to Jack Rabbit for allowing us, you know, putting aside time for us, you know, to be able to talk to your customers. And I want to thank everybody on this call uh, for giving me time to present, you know, some things to you. And I, I hope that you found it useful. And um, Again, I just uh, appreciate it. So thank you very much, Sam. Excellent. My pleasure, and thank you, Ty. And thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And uh, we're getting a lot of thank yous, Ty's, from people. So uh, everyone was very pleased today. So that's great. Really enjoyed having you on the webinar today. So we will be ending up now. Uh, thank you for your time this afternoon. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now, everyone.